Hello and welcome to our Sunday morning service for the 15th of May. Come, let us praise the name of the Lord, the one whose name is so great, whose glory is above the earth and the heavens. Come, let us praise the name of the Lord, who was and is and is to come. Amen. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a true and sincere heart. And a moment for reflection. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And a moment to share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let's take a moment to pray for peace for ourselves, our friends and neighbours and the world. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 to 18. The apostles and believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticised him and said, You went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me and we entered a man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptised with water but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, 
they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading is from John 13, 31 to 35. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When he, Judas, was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. In our short gospel reading, we are back at the time before Jesus has been crucified. He knows what is going to happen and Judas has left to strike his bargain with Jesus' enemies and to make plans to destroy him. It is significant that Judas goes out into the darkness, we are told, and it was night. As Jesus earlier couches the battle between good and evil as light versus darkness. There is a sense of urgency in Jesus' words to his disciples here. A clock has been put into motion and cannot be stopped. The hour of Jesus' trial and execution is striking. He has little time left with them and so much he wants to tell them. He has to distill his message down to its essentials and prepare them for the fact that they will have to pass this message on. He explains to them about his death in terms of the Son of Man and being glorified. We know the disciples didn't always fully understand what Jesus was saying. Was he being unnecessarily cryptic, or was it simply because they could not contemplate things changing? or because they had an idea of what the Messiah would do and it didn't involve being seized and tried for treason and meeting an ignominious death. The Son of Man is a phrase used in the book of Daniel. He is someone who is given dominion and power and kingship and who represented the future for those who were suffering for their faithfulness in God. Remember, Daniel and the other Israelites were in captivity and at that time were expected to worship the king and not their God. This figure of the Son of Man was to give them hope through these times, and he combined both suffering and glory. So it absolutely made sense for Jesus to identify himself with this figure. He was to be raised on the cross in dreadful suffering, but was later to be raised to heaven into glory. Jesus tells the disciples he has to leave them. He calls them his children, and of course, in their bewilderment and struggle to understand, they are like puzzled children. They are dependent on him and don't see how they would be able to manage without him. In the verses after this reading, Peter protests about Jesus leaving. He wants to go with him and says he will lay his life down for him. Yet Jesus knows that Peter will betray him. And the disciples are given this commandment to love one another. <clears throat> this love isn't just the sort of love we have for family members, strong though that is, or the love we have for pets or friends or chocolate. This love is to be modelled on the love Jesus is showing, love which is selfless and self-sacrificial and which doesn't count the cost. Love one another just as I have loved you. This idea of loving each other People we don't know well, complete strangers maybe, is odd and a little uncomfortable. How far are we supposed to go? 
Are we supposed to love criminals and wrongdoers? Are we supposed to love people in faraway lands who we will never meet, people with whom we have nothing in common? The thing is, we do have something in common with people who seem completely unlike ourselves. We were all created by God and we are all loved by God. Jesus died for all. We can't get away from that fact and decide not to love a whole section of our community or of the world. And in the Acts reading, we heard about the Jewish Christians based in Jerusalem and their amazement that Gentiles who didn't follow the dietary rules could be Christians too. Just as well they came round to the idea in the end, as you and me are Gentiles. Peter and the others had to learn that the way Jesus loved, and so the way they were called to love, was without limits, without boundaries, and with no choice in who they loved. So we have to love from people we may recoil from, who lead very different lives from us. That doesn't mean that we approve of criminal or antisocial activity, but maybe we have to seek some understanding of the possible reasons behind it and look at helping where we can. And we have to show love and care for each other in our church communities too. It should be easier, but it doesn't always work out that way when there are disagreements. But if we can't show love to each other, what chance have we got of fulfilling Jesus' command to go out and make disciples of all people? No one's going to listen to us if we are known to come from a group of people who are full of ill feelings towards each other. And no one's going to listen if what we say doesn't come out of love. We as Christians have to remember that God created all of us, loves all of us unconditionally and needs us and here commands us to show that love to everyone we can. Let's pray. We thank you, Jesus, that you loved us so much that you died for us and rose again. We thank you, Jesus, that you gave us your spirit to comfort us and lead us. We thank you, Jesus, that you gave us the perfect way to show your love to others, not in complicated ways, but simply by loving them with the love you have shown to us. Open our hearts today so that we can receive your love anew and then we can give far more than we believe is possible. Amen. And we affirm our faith. Though Jesus was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. and our prayers. God of the past, the present and the future, we trust you for all that is to come as we pray for countries in turmoil, those where entire cities have been destroyed and infrastructures paralysed, in Syria, in Ukraine, in Yemen and in many more places. May the old order of war pass away and a new order of peace flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for countries and communities where crops have been decimated and livestock have perished. May the old order of famine pass away and a new order of abundance flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for young people, for those around the world thinking about careers, about next steps, for all, especially girls and young women in Afghanistan and elsewhere, who are denied an education, for those who struggle to see a future for themselves at all. May the old orders of pressure and prejudice pass away and a new order of confidence and opportunity flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who feel at the end of their strength, for those caring for children with complex needs, for those caring for family members with dementia or chronic illness, for those suffering from depression, for those worn out by grief. May the old order of struggle pass away and the new order of support flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are unwell or in distress, for people with temporary or permanent sickness, and for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. And a moment of silence to bring those you know to God for help and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our churches and for ourselves, for wisdom for those who guide and lead, for resilience for congregations amid indifference, and for ourselves as we navigate the challenges of living faithfully today, tomorrow, and the next day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the Collect, the special prayer for today. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help, we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And some notices. Thank you to those who helped with Messy Church and with Beat and Beans last week. Christian Aid Week will take place from the 15th to 21st of May, so do make a donation if you can. The St Barnabas annual meetings are after church today and the St James ones after church next Sunday. So please do please come and attend if you can and um, we'll be looking at the past year and looking towards the future. So these meetings are important. And from a wider perspective, Sheena has written a report from a meeting at, at the diocese about the future and copies are at the back of the churches. Kettles On takes place at St Barnabas on Tuesday from 10.30. And Mother's Union is on the 17th of May at 2.30. We will be hearing from Wendy Mills about her time as a volunteer in a hospital in North India. There will be a Jubilee event at St James from 10 o'clock on Saturday the 28th of May. Plants, refreshments, raffle, all proceeds to the Friends of St James. And on the 5th of June, the Sunday after that, we will have a joint Jubilee service at St Barnabas at 10.30. So the normal services at St James and St Barnabas will not be taking place on Sunday the 5th of June. Joint service at St Barnabas at 10.30. Go in the peace of Christ.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.